grade 12 learners, I'm Stephen Klein and this channel is How To EGD. It's the channel for hacking your grade 12 civil pet for the 2023 school year. Now, just as I'm sitting here, today is a day that this pet is launched nationally. And you know what? It is a problem. It is a massive challenge for grade 12s to successfully complete their pets in time and correctly. And that's the purpose for this video series called How to Hack Your Pet Only on How to EGD. I'm going to help you solve and face the biggest problem with great success. And I'm going to show you already in this video two great tips that you need to know right up front. Here's the first one. This pet document that's just given to you is just as important in weight and in marks as your November paper one and paper two papers that you'll get for the national exam. And you know how serious and focused you'll be with those two papers. So please hear me, hear me, hear me. You need to apply and direct yourself just with such seriousness and intent as you would have prepared for your final exam. If that's your approach, you're gonna make a success, I'll guarantee you. Because from my side, I'll take you step by step through about 10 episodes detailing from the design brief all the way to even getting your front cover 100% correct. So these episodes will be launched in the next few weeks and you'll be able to watch them only on how to EGD. So let me introduce to you and give you an overview of this year's pack with some great visuals to help you gain understanding of what it is that you're going to have to design this year. Please respond, share, and let's work together to get the best possible pet nationally for our grade 12 learners. Let's get started right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your practical assessment task for your civil design project is nothing else but a brand new conference center for which you have to come up with a suggested design solution. That's it. You're an architect and you have to come up with a design that's going to satisfy the needs given in your official practical assessment task document. And this document is, of course, available in the downloads below. All right. I'm going to take you through an animated talk through of this new conference center. And right at the end, I'll end it off with my second top tip that you need to know right at the beginning. The rest of the episodes following this one will, of course, take you in detail into each component. But for now, let's just do a quick walkthrough. So the building that you're going to design must have a maximum catering capacity of 65 delegates. It's a single story building and there's access for disabled people. There's already existing bed and breakfast on this facility and so your roof must incorporate that design functionality and make use of a Dutch gable design with IBR roof seats and you'll have to complete that roof in full. Then there needs to be an inner and outer curved wall that's going to be a prominent feature in your design, something really exciting that you can consider where to place that exactly. The main entrance will have to be north facing and consist of a rotating door with single glass and aluminium swing doors on either side. Then in front of this you have to have a reception with a covered drive through which is wide enough to accommodate visitors to the conference center and for them to safely be dropped off and collected as delegates. Then also there's going to be a space as you enter this building which is called a concourse where there's a reception possibilities and for you to have some catering for uh, your visitors. And that size is approximately 120 square meters and there will have, of course, to be a built-in reception desk as well. There's going to be a small kitchen with your basic kitchen zings, built-in cupboards, areas to prepare food, refrigerator, etc. Um, that will serve the concourse area. Then you're going to need three similar size meeting rooms which can host at least 15 delegates, uh, each no larger than 36 square meters, plus two smaller meeting rooms, just for those smaller groupings and meetings that's going to take place. Uh, of course, there's going to be some kind of stacking door between these smaller rooms because they want us to open that up into a bigger area. The last part of this pad details the toilet facilities, uh, which you'll have to provide male and female, as well as for disabled 
access. Then there's going to be, of course, your lightning fittings and all of that that really is going to uh, create an ambience in your design. So consider that carefully. And your total design is going to not exceed 320 square meters. They've also given you your site plan, and I'll do, of course, talk through through this. But there you can see, see the existing bed and breakfast. And um, this stand is called Stand 71. Initially, it was subdivided between 71A and 70B. But the PAT talks about these two stands being consolidated. And so you have a beautiful area here, which is more than big enough to include your conference center. All right. We're not going to go into details of the rest. I'm going to go over to my actual second big tip. And that is page 16 of your PAT document. On this... It says assessment criteria and checklist for the 2023 PAT. Now this document is a two-page document and it is actually specifically for the learners to take note of. It's your checklist to make sure that each component of this PAT is completed. Now you'll see here there's a grading scale to help you understand how we will grade this. The first, uh, all, all the marks here on the side you'll see most of them only goes out up out of two each component with a total of 10 for a division all right so for instance your first paragraph in your design brief giving the background and comprehensive description of what is to be designed there's a possibility of two marks if you get more than 80 percent of your presentation completed here you're going to get two out of two if you only meet 30% of evidence, in other words, let's say you you did some background here, but it wasn't comprehensive, uh, and we're not still 100% sure you know what you're going to design, but you've at least stated something there, that's going to be a 1 out of 2. And then, of course, if you've almost not met that requirement, uh, you can get a 0 out of 2. So, this checklist is critical for you. It details exactly all the different parts, even in the research. And this actually speaks to your PAD document. If you look at page 12 in your PAD document, there you'll see the first part, which talks about the design brief. And they tell you exactly what is the requirement for that first paragraph. What's the requirement for the second paragraph. And you'll see how this lines up with this checklist. So you have to work both of these together as you proceed through your path. So you can see if 1.1 is the first paragraph, so you can actually number this already 1.1, just in your preparation. 1.2 is the second paragraph. 1.3 is your specifications here, list of specifications. Okay, but I'll detail all of that as we go along. The important hack for you is to make sure you do not misunderstand the importance of this document because this is how you are going to be assessed by meeting all of these different requirements. Make sure you subscribe to How to EGD. Make sure you watch the episodes following this one because it will take you through step by step to ensure you absolutely nail the pack for this year's uh, Grade 12 Civil Project. Thank you so much. Really look forward to supporting you and helping you on this journey. Now it's your turn.